be with you again for Kids Church Online. Hi Michelle, hi kids. Hey Michelle, did you get a new haircut? <gasps> uh, you look different. Uh, did you get a new haircut? Yes, I did. Thank you for noticing. Yes, I did, Jenny. How exciting is it? We can now go out and get a haircut. But what have you been up to, Jenny? What do you think, uh, what did you want to chat about? Are we learning more about what Jesus told his disciples to do to share the good news today? Well, we've finished our series, which was Jesus on Mission, Jenny. So you must have missed out Kahoot last week. Sorry, I remember that last week we had heard that Jesus told his disciples to go and make disciples of all nations. What a big job. That's right, Jenny. It was such a big job that we are still doing it today. Now, do you remember what the disciples did after they'd heard the good news and believed? Um, did they move to the next town? No, wait, they baptised people, then stayed to teach them to obey all of Jesus' commands. Brilliant remembering, Jenny. I'm sure you would have done very well at the Kahoot. Now, it's important for all of us to become spiritually mature as we grow in our knowledge, love and obedience to Jesus. So, are we going to learn something new from the Bible this week, Michelle? Will we be looking at the Old Testament or the New Testament? We are going to be looking at the New Testament, Jenny, the book of Romans. Did Jesus go to Rome? I don't remember that part. The book of Romans is actually a letter which Paul wrote to the Christians in Rome after Jesus had gone to heaven. We learned about Paul earlier this year. He was in prison in Rome. Is that where he wrote the letter? Not quite, Jenny. Paul wrote the letter to the Christians in Rome before he'd even met them. He was hoping to go to Rome to see them, but he wrote the letter first. How did Paul know what to write if he had never met them? Well, Paul wrote about the gospel, explaining to people the danger they were in and about God's rescue plan. Rescue helicopter. Hey, build the helicopter. They were in danger. What happened? Were the Christians in Rome going to be put in prison like Paul? Do they need an ambulance or a rescue helicopter? Rescue helicopter. I'm not sure that writing a letter was the quickest way to help get them to the help they needed. The Christians in Rome didn't need a rescue helicopter. Rescue helicopter. Or an ambulance. You might remember, Jenny, from earlier in the year, we heard about Paul travelling all around, telling everyone the good people, the good news about Jesus. Paul was in danger sometimes when he told people about Jesus. He even went to prison. Is that why the Christians in Rome were in danger? It was even bigger than that, Jenny. Paul wanted to tell them that everyone is in danger and needs to be rescued. But what were they in danger from? Wild animals? Sickness? Evil rulers? Paul told them that all people are in danger because God will judge them for rejecting him and not living with him as their king. Are there some people who can escape this punishment? Some people who can be rescued? Well, all people have turned away from God and we all deserve his judgment. Now, you can find this in the Bible, Jenny, in the book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 11. It says, There is no one who understands. There is no one who seeks God. This doesn't sound like good news, Michelle. But Paul says that we can be saved through God's rescue plan. Rescue helicopter. Is this where the helicopter comes in? Rescue helicopter. Not a helicopter, Jenny, but Jesus. 
Paul says in Romans chapter 1, verse 16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. So God can rescue everyone who believes in Jesus? Paul wants to share this message with everyone, even people he has never met. Has anyone, everyone really turned away from God, Michelle? What about people who do love God and live with him as their king? Jenny, do you remember a while ago when we talked about sin? We said we could think about sin like this. The S stands for shove off God. The I stands for I'm in charge. And the N stands for no to your rules. We all reject God sometimes, whether it's on purpose or by ignoring God or not treating him as the most important part of our lives. Even people who love God do this sometimes and that is why we are all in danger. But if we obey God's rules and do good things, can we be saved? Good question, Jenny. Paul says in Romans chapter 3, verse 20, Therefore, no one will be declared righteous in God's sight by the works of the law. Rather, through the law, we become conscious of our sin. Oh, so as hard as we try to obey God's rules, that only shows us that we can't do it perfectly and we can't be made right with God like that. But does God have a rescue plan for us? Jenny, the rescue plan is trusting in Jesus and believing that he died to take the punishment for our sin. We can't do anything to make ourselves right with God, but Jesus has done this for us. By trusting in him, we can be friends with God. Now, Paul wrote writes in Romans chapter 1, verse 17, For in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last, just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. Wow! So we can't save ourselves from the danger of God's judgment, but by trusting in Jesus, we can be friends with God forever? That's a really important message that Paul wrote, wrote to the Christians in Rome. And it is still true for us today. That's right, Jenny. It's important for us to understand that only Jesus can save us and make us right with God. There is nothing we can do to rescue ourselves. We have to trust in Jesus so that we can be friends with God. Is that the end of Paul's letter, Michelle? No, Jenny. He has lots more to say, and we'll look at some more next week. But for now, it's time for Kids Church Catch-Up on Zoom. Hi, Elijah, Shiloh and Emily. It's great to see you on Zoom. Hi. 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 Thanks for joining us today for Kids Church Catch-Up. I like doing it on Zoom because instead of people just sending me a video, we actually get to talk about stuff, which is great. So tell me, are you happy to be back at school? Definitely. Those of you who go to school or kinder, if you're going to kinder. Next you're not happy to be back at kinder? Yeah. You are, yeah, yeah. I think it's nicer to be able to leave the house a bit more often, isn't it? Go and see friends and do stuff. That is great. Well, I'm going to ask you the questions that we ask each week for our Kids Church Catch Up segment. So, Elijah, I'm going to start with you. For our first question, I'm going to say, what have you learned about yourself this year? 
during lockdown? Um, probably that I'm a bit more organised when I've got something to do and when I've and when I've got nothing to do, I get a bit lazy and I'm disorganised. So, yeah. I think lots of people have found that about themselves, Elijah. I think that's exactly right. How about you, Shiloh? What have you learnt about yourself? Probably that I like reading. I think that's something I've found out. You like reading. Spent a lot of time reading during lockdown. Yeah, we couldn't go out and do other things. So that's really great. Really great. And what about you, Everly? What did you learn about yourself? Um, I learned that I was really scared and sometimes I get a bit angry. Yeah, I think lots of people have found that during lockdown as well. It's hard when you're just stuck in one house with the same people all the time, isn't it? It's easy to get angry at other people. Now, all right, let's move on to question number two. Question number two for Elijah. How have you seen God working during this COVID year? Um, I think he's been working in coronavirus. So I think he brought it because so we can have more time together and slow down. Um, yeah. Yeah. So we can spend more time with our family. And yeah, and I, I think you're right, Elijah. I think a lot of people have actually found out what's really important to them this year and what's really the most important things in their life when we've had to slow down a bit and work those things out. What do you think, Shiloh? How have you seen God working this year? Um, there's definitely the Probably that there's like zero cases lately, so I'm pretty sure he's got something to do with that. Absolutely. There's been lots and lots of people praying, haven't there, that cases will, case numbers will improve and cases will go down, and we have absolutely seen that happen here, especially in Melbourne. That's great. All right, last question, guys, and this is the fun one. What are you really looking forward to doing it might be something you've already been able to do with restrictions easing a little bit, or it might be something you're still waiting for when restrictions ease even more. Lige, what are you looking forward to? Um, I've got two things. Yeah, sure. First, going back to church and yeah, being able to do church again. And second one, um, probably meeting up with my friends at a park or something or at their house. Yeah, there's still, it's been great to be able to go back to school and maybe see some people, but there's still a lot that we'd still like to do, isn't there? And I'm definitely looking forward to being able to go back to church and see everyone again. It's been really hard not being able to talk to our friends and see each other all the time. All right, Shiloh, what are you looking forward to? Probably that I... And probably uh, seeing family. Seeing, seeing more of your family? Absolutely. Yep, I haven't seen lots of my family much this year as well. It's been tricky. <laughs> and, Everly, what are you looking forward to? Um, I'm looking forward to meet, meeting new friends and seeing my friends. That's great. Yes, you'll, you'll be able to see more and more people, even have friends over to your house, maybe soon. We'll just have to wait and see. Well, Madisons, thanks for catching up with us today. It's been great to see your smiling faces on my screen. And hopefully, very soon, we'll get to see each other in person. Thanks for joining us on Kids Church Catch Up. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. Peace. <laughs> Wasn't it great to see the Madisons on Zoom? It's so encouraging to see different friends each week and find out what they have been doing and how they have seen God working this year. It's been a really challenging year and I have missed seeing everyone in person, but I'm so thankful that we can still see when 
one another using technology. Paul couldn't use Zoom catch up with the Christians in Rome. He had to write them a letter instead. That's right, Jenny. Now, why do you think that Paul was so keen to travel around to so many different places telling people about Jesus? I think he knew how important it was for everyone to hear the good news about Jesus. We heard today that we have all turned away from God and need to be rescued from his judgment. Paul wanted everyone to have that chance to hear about Jesus, God's rescue plan. That's true, Jenny. Now, often we look at other people and think that we have nothing in common with them. But now we know that no matter how different we might look or how different our experiences are, we all need to be rescued by trusting in Jesus. There is nothing we can do to save ourselves, no matter how good we are or how well we try to keep God's commands. God is powerful and he rescues us by letting Jesus take the punishment for our sin when he died on the cross. And anyone who trusts in Jesus by believing that he took their punishment can be rescued. That's so good. I can see why Paul wanted to tell everyone. But Michelle, sometimes I get a bit nervous about telling my friends about Jesus. I understand, Jenny, but remember what Paul said. He said, I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. The gospel, the good news about Jesus, is the only way that we can be saved and all people need to be rescued. I know what it is like to be rescued by Jesus, so I want to tell others so they can be rescued too. And remember, Jenny, that there are two parts to people coming to know and love Jesus. Our part is sharing about how Jesus can rescue us by taking the punishment for our sin with others. We share that news with others. But God's part is changing people's hearts so that they can turn back to him and trust in Jesus. So we can be confident to share the good news knowing that it is God who changes their hearts, not us. There's one thing I'm not sure about, Michelle. What's that, Jenny? We want to obey Jesus' commands and live how he wants us to. But you said that doing this and being good doesn't save us. So do we need to live this way? Only trusting in Jesus saves us, Jenny. There is nothing that we can do to save ourselves. But that doesn't mean we don't have to obey Jesus' commands. When we love and trust Jesus, we want to live the way that he did and we want to obey him. Now, knowing God's law makes us aware that we can't keep it perfectly and it reminds us that we need Jesus to rescue us. Isn't it amazing that God loves us so much that he made this rescue plan for us so that we can be friends with him forever when we trust in Jesus? And this is why we need to keep sharing the gospel with everyone, Jenny. I will. Everyone needs to hear the good news about Jesus. Let's pray about who we could share the gospel with now. Here's Jill. Good morning all. This is Jill from St John's Sunday School. And today, after learning about uh, Paul and his letter to the Romans, we now have um, time for prayer. Now, we will close our hands and we will close our eyes and we'll bow our heads and I want you to repeat after me um, when we're about to pray. So we'll start off. Thank you, Lord, that you sent Jesus to be our saviour. Thank you, Lord, that Paul saw how wonderful Jesus was and saw that he was a sinner and needed Jesus' help. Help us to see that we always need Jesus to help us. 
Help us also to be able to tell others about Jesus by being a good example, telling the truth and standing up for those that are not strong. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And now it's time for our memory verse. Now for the next few weeks, our memory verse is from Romans chapter 6, verse 23. But do you know, I don't know how to say this verse. I only know how to sing it. So for the next few weeks, we are going to be singing our memory verse. Now this is also the first time that I have played guitar since I was in grade five, which was a long time ago. And my guitar playing has not gotten better in all of that time. So I've also got Jess here to play the ukulele to distract from my terrible guitar playing. Are you ready for our memory verse? Here we go. <coughs> you to send me in a video of you saying this memory verse. I want a video of you singing it. Overwhelm me next week with videos of you singing the memory verse. It's going to be great. I can't wait. And now it's time for craft. Now for our first craft today, you're going to need two sheets. One will look like this and the other one looks like this. Now, everyone needs one of these ones, but you can share this one with a brother or sister. You only need one of these rings. So if you've got a brother or sister doing this craft as well, just print one page for both of you. Now, our first job, which I've already done, is coloring. So that's your first job. Then let's see what we'll do next. I'm gonna warn you now, there's some tricky cutting involved. All right, let's start with cutting out the rings. So, first bit, not too hard. Cutting around the outside of our rescue ring. Because Jesus rescues us from God's judgment. So, we're using this picture of a life ring as of what rescue looks like. All right, so here we go, around the outside, not too tricky. But next, this is where the tricky cutting is gonna come in. We need to cut around the inside as well. Okay, we're cutting out that gray shaded area. So, as usual, easiest way to start off, fold your page kind of in half, do a starting snip, and then you'll be able to get your scissors inside to do the cutting on the inside. Little kids, you might maybe, depending on how good you are with scissors, you might want to get a grown up to help you with this part because you don't want to cut through your ring. You want it to be a nice circle like this with a gap in the middle. That's our first bit of tricky cutting. Next, we need our other page. So what we need to do next is we're going to cut along this line 
around the edge of these people, okay? So, once again, a bit tricky, but we'll fold our page in half so we can get a good starting snip. And then we'll be able to fit our scissors in carefully and cut all the way around this bold line. All right, so I've done that side. Now we're gonna go up across the top. Now these people don't look very happy, do they? Prepare to meet Mr. Angry Eyes. I think it's because they know that they are in danger of God's judgment. Oh, once we've done our tricky cutting, they'll look like this, and we're just gonna fold them forward a bit. Now, I should have told you at the start that we also need for this craft a piece of string or ribbon, whatever you've got, about 20 centimeters. So, what we're going to do is tape this bit of ribbon to the back of our back of our um, life ring. So, I'm just going to cut the tape. I'm not need it again. I'll need it again in a second. So, this says the good news of God's rescue plan. Can you remember what God's rescue plan was? Rescue helicopter. I'll tell you what it was. It was Jesus. And then we can rescue these people that we've cut out. Look at that. Stick the life ring around them and we're just going to tape the other end of our string onto the back of the crown. I'm going to show you this properly in just a second. Getting my tape on. Okay, so we've taped the other end of our string onto the back of the crown. And now here we have our rescued people. It says no one wants God to be their king. We all want to rule over our own lives. Everyone who lives like this is in danger of being punished by God. That's why we all need to hear the good news of God's rescue plan. Here we go, the life ring has been thrown out by God to rescue these people with Jesus. That's our first craft for today. Hope you enjoyed that one. Let's have a look at the next one. This one is also two pages. The first page looks like this, nothing to color. This never happens. Never mind, you'll need one each of these. And the second page looks like this. Now this page has enough for three people. So you need one row and one circle. Everyone will need that. So first job as usual, coloring. And if you're sharing this page with someone else, maybe do your cutting out before you do your coloring so you'll all be able to do your coloring at the same time and not have to pass the one piece. So, I've done my colouring, so now I'm going to start my cutting. Now this cutting's not terribly tricky, but maybe just a little bit. So, I'm going to cut out. Now, although these look like they're in a row, they don't quite exactly fit a row, and you need to cut out each square, rectangle, individually. So, there's one with Paul. Here's one with some angry looking people who are ignoring God. Mr. Angry Eye. Cutting them out. And then our next one is the skull and crossbones. That's showing that we are in danger. Everyone is in danger from God's judgment. Here we go, haven't coloured in my skull or crossbones but you can do that if you like. And the last one I need to cut out is my circle. Again, not terribly tricky cutting because we don't have to cut the middle out this time, just around the outside. But if you're not good at cutting circles, you might want to get someone to help you. 
I find when cutting circles it's easier to move your paper rather than moving your scissors all the time. But that's just a tip from me. That's pretty neat. All right, here we are. We've now got our four shapes that we're going to fit into the right place on here. So we'll need to read what it says. Paul wrote a letter which he sent to Rome. This is what he wrote. To the Christians in Rome from Paul. I love telling people everywhere the good news about Jesus. Now, which picture do you think fits that? I'll give you a clue, it's not going to be the circle. Who loves telling people everywhere about Jesus? I think it's Paul. So let's glue Paul into place here. Here we go, Paul's in place. All right, our next one says, everyone needs to hear about Jesus because they are in danger. Oh, we just talked about that. That's our skull and crossbones. That's the one that signifies danger. So we'll glue that one on. All right, we're getting there. The next bit says, they are in danger because they have turned away from God. Ah, here's our angry looking people. Mr. Angry Eye. Ignoring God, represented by the crown. That goes there. And last of all, I think we know which one goes here. There is a way for everyone to be rescued when they hear the good news of God's rescue plan and trust in Jesus. That's this one. It's our life ring, people being rescued. Here we go, stick that one on there. So here we go, you have just made yourself your own little summary of the first part of Paul's letter to the Romans. Now, if you'd like, you can try to make this page look a bit like an old letter. I don't know if you've done this before, but sometimes you can maybe use a tea bag or something like that, dribble a bit of tea on it, let it dry, that can make it look a bit old fashioned. You can roll it up like a scroll. I'm gonna roll it a bit one way and a bit the other way. It's working perfectly, I think. Here's my scroll and I could even tie a piece of ribbon around it. What do you think? Here's my scroll of the letter to the Romans. I hope you have fun with that. See if you can make yours look really old, like Paul's letter would be. Send me a picture if you like. That'd be great. I'll see you all next week. Have fun with your craft. Have a great week. Bye.